two months had passed since that peddler had given Naftali the Don Quixote book. And one day, on his way to buy soap and tea at the general store, near the newly built railroad station, Naftali spotted a towering man with a beard, who had just arrived on the train to Tulchin. In awe, Naftali decided this well-dressed man looked like Don Quixote himself. First, his physique was similar to what Naftali had seen in the pictures. He was very tall and thin, but instead of looking frail, he looked quite sporty and fit. Second, the stranger looked very noble, tidy and stylish in his spotless, freshly pressed suit. He not only stood out from the rushing peddlers, ragged beggars and rowdy porters surrounding him. Indeed, he looked so distinct on that shabby Tulchin street, among the chickens and stray dogs, he even seemed unearthly. Third, he had a refined, expensively dressed female companion, his Dulcinea. The kind, fresh expression on her face gave Naftali the courage to get closer to the unfamiliar noble couple who had illuminated the dingy street with their inexplicable presence. The man, who looked like Don Quixote, stood there with his rosy-cheeked, blue-eyed Dulcinea, looking around, apparently not knowing which road to choose. Two stocky porters with thick necks and sinewy hands who had just helped Don Quixote unload his luggage from the train were eager to carry his huge suitcases, which were almost as big as a mare. But with a quick gesture, Don Quixote stopped them. Naftali, in his short patched coat and boots that were tied around the bottom with string to keep the souls from walking away on their own, approached Don Quixote and the beautiful lady and quietly, so as not to disturb this dream, he said, Buenos dias, senores. This was one of the expressions he had learned in Spanish. However, Don Quixote seemed not to notice him. This was not surprising, because he was so tall and Naftali so short, the crown of his head barely reached Don Quixote's belt. But his lady heard something and leaned down toward Naftali, trying to hear what he had just said. Naftali was afraid to talk to Don Quixote, because if he mistook windmills for his enemies, he could easily mistake a little boy for somebody else too. But the kindness in his companion's eyes encouraged Naftali to start a conversation. Buenos dias, he repeated, his voice trembling and weak. And this time Don Quixote finally noticed him. He raised his eyebrows and said something to the lady in a language that Naftali couldn't understand. Naftali was puzzled. Don Quixote didn't seem to speak Spanish. Or was he angry because Naftali's Spanish wasn't good enough? And was he punishing Naftali by speaking this unknown language? Naftali tried again. 
he was rather ashamed that in the presence of such an important person as Don Quixote, he could only say two simple phrases. Buenos dias, señor y señora, como están? Surely such an important visitor to their dumpy town deserved to hear more Spanish than two phrases. That simply meant. Good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. How are you? But unfortunately for Naftali, at the very moment he was mumbling his Spanish phrases, two of Tulchin's rabbis showed up, helped Don Quixote into their carriage and rode away, before Naftali could explain himself. Nor could he speak with the rabbis, who were very busy loading Don Quixote's luggage and complimenting Dulcinea's fresh appearance. Miss Clara will look after things now, so you can rest after such a long trip. Though you look so magnificent, it seems as though life's complexities don't affect you one bit. <laughs> 